As she desperately tries to find the unmute button. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Um, afternoon, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the last week of January. How on earth did we get to the last week of January? Uh, I saw something on social media the other day that's talked about the different um, you know, months in February having 28 days and January having 5,460, which is about what this January feels like. Um, I'm really looking forward to today's session because I think there's, I'm always trying to be more productive and I'm always looking for hints and tips from other people about how they do different things and what kind of hacks can we pick up from other people. It's amazing um, the, the things you just don't think of that other people are, are kind of using. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's that kind of one of those things where I hate, I don't make New Year's resolutions, but I'm, I'm always looking to kind of improve and, and just pick up things from others. So our Connect Four, I mean, Sarah and I have been looking at Connect Four and, and what the topics could be. Um, I would also say if there's anything that you think we could be doing, um, please, please, please give us a shout. Um, we tend to get asked about the same kind of topics from businesses all the time. Businesses are always looking to um, look at their processes to kind of continually improve what they do, but always marketing and sales and, and kind of learning from other people comes really high on the list of what people are interested in hearing about. So um, in the absence of being able to do things face to face, Sarah is working hard on the virtual programme events and just trying to make them as um, topical as possible. So please give us a shout and um, thank you so much for joining us today. I really do appreciate it. Um, as Sarah will, will kind of take you through the format for today, but I just wanted to kind of highlight some of the other events that we've got coming up. Um, I don't know how many of you are signed up to be physical with us tomorrow, but it's part of our ongoing wellbeing programme, which we started last year that looked at mindset, that looked at um, how your health and getting out and, and kind of accessing physical spaces all always makes a huge difference to your mental health and how that helps you be um, more able to kind of balance all the different things you've got, whether it's work life and um, possibly some of you also doing and um, helping your young people with remote learning at home. It's all masses and masses of challenge at the moment, isn't it? So um, we're going to be looking at how you can be active, how that's good for you, how it helps you have a healthy heart and um, strengthening your bones and muscles and all that kind of really good thing. So um, finish off the month um, in, and set yourself up for some good habits going into February. Um, if you're like me and you're always looking for kind of something to make you um, get up and, and move a bit, I have signed up for a Chaz charity um, thing next month. So I'm going to be doing 10,000 steps. You notice I said I am going to be doing 10,000 steps a day in February. Um, the challenge is 280,000 steps in the month. So um, yeah, I might do a bit less during the week, but then have to get out the weekend and make up for um, bad um, part during the week. But I, I'm always looking for different things like that. I know loads of people that are doing the, the Maggie's um, January challenge and have been um, out there pounding the streets to get their, their miles up. So um, yeah, if you fancy taking part in something like that, or if you've got something yourself and you want us to be telling everybody about um, these kind of um, things are always good. I guess either for personal responsibility or to help you be a bit competitive against your pals. Um, so, you know, lots of other things. Um, unsurprisingly, um, international trade at the moment is high on everybody's list, whether that's because you get your stapler and your staples from somebody that brings it in from the EU and all of a sudden it's not there anymore, or whether you're like me and you go into Tesco and you're like, I can't get kitchen roll and there's no fairy liquid what on earth is going on is it just me that is buying things that are are delayed there are all sorts of unintended consequences of us leaving the eu on the 1st of january so the the british chambers of commerce um along with other chambers are always putting on events that might help you get a bit more up to speed on that so um and also we can uh, learn an awful lot from engaging with people overseas you might find that there's new customers out there for you uh, and you just never thought that that might be a possibility for you or your business so um you know please have a look at our events we've got our next virtual dac 123 happening on the 2nd of february um and that's you know, always just good for getting everybody together, doing a bit of networking, but also I'm um, talking about 
tropical aspects and getting a, a sense from other businesses about what they are doing on any one particular topic. So um, please take the time to get engaged in that. There is also a Labour Market Insights event happening with Skills Development Scotland on the 3rd of February. And that's always, um, this is the first of those events that we've run, but I would say if you've not come across their data before, Skills Development Scotland obviously have access to an enormous amount of data, but what they do is they publish some really good Dundee and Angus level data that will show where the current jobs are, where they think the future jobs are going to be, where replacement demand for jobs might be. And that just might help you sell more products and services to some of the key sectors that are um, prevalent in our local area. Um, but it's also a chance for us to hear from Skills Development Scotland about the support that they've got out there. Uh, and there is a lot of support. They have got a brilliant Skills for Growth programme that will get you two fully funded days of a, an advisor coming in and looking at if you've got succession plans, what are your training skills analysis needs looking like? Um, and you could really get some good support. They've obviously also got um, quite a bit of funding. And at the moment, I don't know if you've all spotted it, but there is funding to help employers take on, on apprentices. So you can access £5,000 of a grant to pay the, the cost of the wages that you have to pay to bring a, an apprentice into your business at the moment. And that's a very short term uh, piece of funding that's available. Your apprentices must start by the end of March. So I would encourage you to have a look at that and come along to that webinar and hear a bit more. So I think that's enough for me. Um, back to you, Sarah, to, to tell us which buttons to press to get us into our rooms with our experts. Thanks, Alison. Um, I'm glad we were on the call earlier today, actually, because I completely forgot how to do things. It's been four weeks now since we've had anything on Zoom, so it's a bit, a bit of a, a refresh. Um, so for those of you who haven't been on Zoom and used the breakout rooms before, the breakout room is basically the exact same as you see at the moment. Um, what will happen is you get a little notification that pops up on your screen that says you've been invited to join either breakout room one or breakout room two. If you don't see that notification pop up down the bottom, you should see a breakout room button um, and it'll be sitting in there if it's not on your screen. So accept that invitation. You'll head off into another breakout room. We've got Donna in one room and Ross in the other from the Chamber team who are hosting. Um, and you will have Pamela and Stuart in one room who are our speakers and you'll have Kim and Kirsty in the other. We'll have time for each of the speakers plus questions and then the speakers will move rooms. Uh, you as an attendee don't need to worry about doing anything. Um, if there are any questions that we don't get on to during that time, um, then just keep them. If we've got time at the end, we'll come on to them when we come back into the main session, which is this room. Um, and if we still don't get on to them because there's so many, then we will um, we'll fan them out to the speakers um, and get them to, to feedback um, for those questions that don't, don't manage to get answered. Okay, so I'm going to open up the breakout rooms just now. Hopefully you all have something there. Our values, why we do what we do. Why, why did we do it in the first place? Why did we introduce the four day week? How did we do it? And the impact that that's obviously having now on the organisation. So the staff team is here and um, missing one member of staff actually from this slide. Um, and I'll explain that when I move on to the next one. I didn't do that the first time round. <laughs> so um, you'll see there's a real range of skills, different responsibilities within our team. And I'll talk through why that's important again um, through these slides. We'll have a pool of volunteers. Um, this is Margaret and Michael. They've been with us for a number of um, months. In fact, Margaret's been with us for a number of years. So they're absolutely vital to the work that we do in the circle as well. As a social enterprise, they're key to um, learning new skills, developing them as individuals and giving them the opportunity to do their own qualifications. And the person missing from that staff slide is actually Michael, who this um, the end of last year became a member of um, staff at the circle. So he's in charge of the facilities and the operation side of things there. Um, so alongside the staff team in the circle, we have our board of directors. The board of directors includes um, myself as a community interest company. I actually also sit on the board. There is Donald McPherson, who's ex-Alliance Trust chairperson um, and um, governance specialist. 
Pete Bailey, WL Gore, Natalie Lafferty from Dundee Uni, Ron Smith, who's an investor and businessman, Anne Gillis, who's a retired um, HR manager from WL Gore, and Mary Snedden, who has a number of years experience working in the third sector and is also one of our tenants um, in the circle. So our values in the circle, we have six values and we spent a lot of last year actually just making sure that we were on track with what these values actually were as well. And we've recently rolled those out to the staff and we're soon to make those public. So we focus on inclusion, fairness, teamwork, professionalism, empowerment and being pioneering. So hopefully one of these, the introduction of the four day week for us was around being inclusive, being fair, the fact that people were part of a team and we were empowering people to obviously do other things and the rest days and the time off and pioneering as well. So doing something differently and being the first to obviously approach this. As a sector, you would think a number of people working in charities and social enterprises would actually adopt this approach. Um, however, it's not common at all within our sector. The circle itself, there is the community hub. So we occupy 30,000 square foot um, of a building in Staffa Place in Dundee. And we have offices that are available for rent there. We have outdoor physical space and you can see some of the nice areas that have been developed by one of our tenants opportunity. Alongside that, we have a range of charities, social enterprises and commercial businesses who are all under one roof. And there's a real mix and a collaborative feel when you step into the circle and people are willing to help each other and to support each other through this difficult time. And I think we've seen that particularly over the past year um, virtually as well, where people are really stepping in to get behind what we're doing there and to continue that community, even if it is online. So we have room hire normally when lockdown uh, <laughs> passes, we'll get back to those room hires and events and everything else. But right now we're doing as much as we can virtually like everybody else. And I think I'm not sure if a number of you will be familiar or not, but the consultancy that we offer is um, basically a merger from the sister company that I started nine years ago. So that was ACK Third Sector Consultants, and we have supported about 400 different organisations over the past nine years in total to secure over £3 million in funding and support them on different things around grant applications, funding bids, events, um, and looking at their fundraising income streams into their organisations. The Circle Academy is a training programme for aspiring social entrepreneurs, charity leaders, business people who want to focus on that more than profit approach. We've had three cohorts of the development programme go through. We've had 24 individuals and we've got a number of these organisations operating right now across Dundee and Angus. So um, one of the big things about the lockdown was that we had to take that programme that was face to face delivery online like a number of people, we had to adapt that offering. So the Academy is now available online for people to learn. In 2019, we became a living wage accredited employer. And again, that one of our values around fairness and making sure that each of the staff were paid the proper um, living wage was something that was very important to us as an organisation. So the background really to the four day working week, um, like many of you, when lockdown kicked in, it was a case of, are we going to get through this? How do we get through this? And um, how can I support the team as best as possible um, on a day to day basis? And I don't know about you, but a lot of the time we were checking in virtually, we were doing that whether staff were furloughed or whether they were still working and we made social events quite common um, online. We had quizzes regularly, lots of things that most organisations did. But in addition to that, it was obviously over the spring summer months where the first lockdown happened and sometimes the sun was shining outside. Sometimes there was um, just much nicer things happening outside your window than actually being focused and fixed to that screen 24 seven. So I introduced on a really bespoke basis, oh, it's a nice day, take a Friday off. Oh, it's a nice day, have a half day on a Monday. 
And that just became the way of things in lockdown. And I noticed people actually turning up the day after their rest day, as we call it, back online, looking refreshed, looking like they were able to tackle things that little bit differently. So when we went back into, I think out of lockdown at that point, we got back into the building a little bit. We were starting to think about the ways that we were working and things that we'd learnt from that. I felt at that point, I wanted to run an organisation that didn't just do things that everyone else did, the nine to five, Monday to Friday, covering the hours that we had to cover and people were burning out left, right and centre. And I saw it in the sector that I work in, when you're driven by your passion, you're often driven so much that you actually forget to put your own oxygen mask on first. So I spoke to the staff, I said, how would you feel if this was something that we introduced as a regular thing? Surprisingly or unsurprisingly, they all said, absolutely, we would love to give it a go. My concern at the time was around, we've got this massive building, we have room bookings, we have tenants, we have to be there for our customers. So how do we do that? How do we ensure that we actually have that presence there during the time that we're um, in covering the hours that we're, op we're open sometimes um, seven days a week? So it's, it's making sure that it works for everyone. So we introduced a rota system. This is now developed three months in advance. At the time it was monthly and we checked in weekly with everyone to see how they were getting on with that. How were they enjoying their rest days? How were they spending their rest days? Were they making sure that they were actually doing something that was beneficial, that was stepping away from the screen? And like many of you, it's not something that a lot of us feel comfortable with when you're given um, that extra day off a week, you feel guilty, you feel like what should I should actually be doing my work, I'm going to log into my email or I'm going to do X, Y and Z or actually I feel terrible, I'm going to have to meet in that day. But as a leader, I had to encourage my staff team to do what I was doing. So I had to switch off the email, switch off, put the out of office on. And it was a bit of a challenge actually. So we all worked through that together and we thought actually, you know what, we can do this. And once we've adapted to this way of working, what a difference it makes, what a difference it makes to the working week. Obviously, alongside that, we have our clients, we have our tenants. What were they going to think about this? You possibly saw the press that went out around about the four day week. We needed to communicate with them first and foremost, how that would affect the services or not in um, a, a number of cases. So, um, we just reassured them that there would always be someone at the end of the email, there would be the on call phone, someone would be in the office and that rota started to really kick in. So every few weeks, everyone has a long weekend, which as you can imagine, is really, really beneficial. The out of office message itself, we wanted that to be quite um, quirky. We wanted people to understand that we've implemented something that is important for the staff physical and mental well-being. Um, I wanted to encourage people to just step away from the screen and to actually do things um, that would actually help their mental health as well. So that was really the pilot stage of it. And the feedback was absolutely amazing. The staff were saying how grateful they were to have been given this opportunity and it was making such a difference. They were able to do personal tasks. They were able to get to the bank. They were able to do things that when it gets to the weekend, often it just flies away and you're often back in the office on a Monday thinking what just happened there. So all these things were coming out from conversations and it really was making a huge difference. So for me, it was about how do we do this and how do we do it in line with what is the accredited standard? So this week, actually, we've just been accredited with the gold standard of 32 hours over four days for any full time member of staff to work. And um, so that did mean that people who were on our full time staff are on 35 hours a week. So it meant a reduction in 12 hours of their um, working week, a working month, should I say, and they were to get paid the same salary. That was really, really important to me. I felt like people were sacrificing, they were um, doing an awful lot to keep focused on the delivery of what we were trying to do in the circle and to keep focused on our vision and our goals to support the sector. And it was, yeah, 
something that I felt really strongly that we needed to keep people on the salaries that they were on and obviously look to review that as time went on. As a result of us implementing this, um, I'm sure it won't surprise you, we've had interest from tenants, other businesses um, about how they can actually implement this and how we, the approach that we took and actually how they could implement it in their own organisation. I've been interviewed by um, researchers in London, in Portugal and a writer in San Francisco recently about the impact that this is having on our workforce and also the fact that this is quite unusual for a, what we would call a third sector organisation, a charity or social enterprise to implement this approach. And for me, it's back to our values, which is focusing on teamwork, fairness, empowering people, making sure that they're given the same opportunities and it really, really is making a difference. We still have regular feedback. It's an agenda item at our team meeting every month. We will review it if necessary. And I think it's something that I, I haven't looked back from imp implementing at all. As I say, it came from lockdown. We continued to check in with the staff. We're now encouraging walk and talk meetings for staff and people on furlough to get them away again from this screen time. Um, we've had an increase, 126% growth on income um, last year. We've introduced new services, including the Academy Online, which now is obviously accessible to people on a much, much wider market than we ever had from people obviously traveling into Dundee itself. Circle Superstars is a project looking at supporting young people in our most um, deprived communities in Dundee. And we rolled that project out and we gave um, a number of gift bags into some of those communities over the past would be about six months now. So there's 300 young people that have benefited from that. Our payroll and bookkeeping service has um, really taken up by our tenants and a number of clients that we've worked with. I somehow managed to write our three year strategy in amongst this uh, lockdown period last year, and that was approved by the board in uh, December last year. 2020, we were recognised as one of the top 100 social enterprises in the UK through the NatWest um, SE100 index. And I feel that having had conversations now with the team and having looked at that journey that we've all been on over the past um, year now, it's a much happier team, much more able to communicate. And I think we're all getting to grips with how we read the signs when someone's struggling virtually as well. So I'm, I'm really I'm pleased with that. This is one of the quotes from one of our employees. Um, just a short space of time, the difference that it's making in terms of their flexibility, well-being, their motivation and being energised as well. So that's it from me. Hopefully that's OK. That's fine. That's lovely. That was really interesting. I'll, I'll have a couple of questions, but I think we're keeping the questions to the end. So um, that's fine. I'll ask. Um, thank you for that. That was really interesting. Um, now I will ask Kim if she could unmute and are you sharing anything with us Kim or are you talking? Oh just me. Fabulous thank you. <laughs> Hi, <When> you um, <laughs> Hi everybody my name is Kim Cameron I'm the Gin Bothy founder sounds a bit American but I suppose founder is the the right word to say and um, we're part of so my umbrella brand above us is Bothy Trading um, so Gin Bothy is, is one of the sections, one of the, the businesses or income streams that we have at the Bothy. We produce a range of spirits and liqueurs, um, gin, rum, cider and um, whiskey into 2022. So that's a little bit about what we do. Um, I'm based in Kerry Muir, our batch Bothy is in Kerry Muir and we have a visitor centre behind us, as you can see here, in Glams. So rural business, um, we employ 14 part-time people, all women, just the way it's worked out. And um, yeah, that's that's where the Bothy's at. So if I haven't met you before, if a Bothy is a home in the hills um, this afternoon, this is your home from my Bothy to yours. Um, and I wanted really to, to start, I'm not going to do slides, um, it's 
just me talking to you as as we would in the bothy. But I wanted just to kind of highlight, I suppose, firstly, that we wouldn't be here, or certainly my business wouldn't be here, if we didn't have the online side of the business. And a huge virtual hub going out to anybody, um, certainly within our stockists, our bars, our restaurants, that, that haven't got an online platform. Um, and I just wanted to say that, so it's not like I have any magic fairy dust to sprinkle over anything. I was just really lucky that we had online, which is now showing up um, the rest of the business. So if there's a gin journey, and I know Kirsty talked about their journey, I was going to talk you through our um, 2020 journey and how productivity and, and kind of the future sits, sits with that. So it started fundamentally, I suppose, like a lot of us um, when lockdown started. Um, was just worry. Um, I was worried we had no event income, no wholesale income, no retail income. Um, I was worried about the jobs. I was worried about the business. I just felt I was worried constantly. Um, and you lived in that constant state of what is tomorrow going to bring? Um, and, and it was like the rug being pulled from under you in a year that should have been one of our I suppose, top income years. Um, we've been trading for six years. This will be our seventh trading year. So we had just about got there. We were working with Scottish Enterprise. We had huge export plans. Um, and then it was just that stop. With our income streams more than halved um, and no tastings in our both experience until we get to tier one. So long term, we knew we couldn't do that. Um, I kind of had this realisation that I hadn't worked this hard to stop or give up. Um, and as appealing as it was to put my head under a duvet and just hope that this was all going to go away in the next couple of weeks, months at that stage, um, I didn't. And I started to think about what I could do rather than what I couldn't do. And our online business, which was about probably a quarter of the business um, up until 2020, was online a database that had been built from years of shows. Um, in 2019, we'd done 162 shows right across the UK. Um, and we'd built this customer following and, and a customer database um, from the events, from tastings, from glams. So we had these customers that we were really wanted to retain and, and hang on to. Um, so the focus of the business probably changed in April um, very quickly and one of the beauties about being a, a founder and um, sounds like a huge business but it really is just me and my part-time team was that I didn't have to go to a board, I didn't have to have it approved. I got some feedback from the team who were absolutely amazing and I think throughout this whole process you really see the, the can-do people, the people that really want to, to work on the journey with you and were prepared to take that deep breath with us. Um, so we launched a £10 box, which now seems a bit mad, but this £10 box, if you hadn't seen it, um, is a little gift box and I don't know whether that's going to work. There it is. Um, it had personal messages in it with uh, say hello, till we meet again, missing you. And we hand delivered and posted out these, these £10 boxes. Um, we did 635 boxes in one week. And it, it really highlighted to me the fact that people wanted to stay connected even with a little something on your doorstep. Um, and we didn't make hardly any money from that at all. Um, but what it did do was increase our new customers. And um, probably now it's quite a clever marketing technique just to increase the database of people that, that we had. But at the, at the time, it was just a short fix um, to say, let's people know that we're still thinking about them. So in May, we expanded this um, online and our sales spiked then. Um, it was the fastest spike that we've ever had since we've moved online. Um, and that moved from the £10 box then into somebody liking the mini in the £10 box into a bigger bottle. So that paid off in May. And then, of course, we thought life is going to go back to normal. Um, I entered a new product, a new brand that I was working on um, called Hip Flask Spirits into a competition. And we thought, well, that's fine because that's something that we're going to have by Christmas. And then, of course, in June, the trend of, of continued. Uh, we still couldn't open. And with a team of all, as I said, women, part time, mostly mums, um, we were faced with how do we continue production and um, manufacturing in a growth spike without being able to, to increase manufacturing production. Um, so I split the team into teams of two. 
So um, they were pre-approved and they agreed who they were going to work with. So if we'd had a COVID case, which luckily we, we haven't had, and everyone as well, um, the business could still operate. This meant working in shifts. Um, some of the shifts started at four in the morning, so four till seven, we did a clean down, the next team would start at eight and then do eight till 12, clean down and start at two um, and, and so on. So yes, productivity dropped whilst sales increased um, and I continued to work. So I worked out with the shift team, so I worked nights, I worked earlier than, than the team. Um, so everyone had what they needed when they came in. Um, it was a bit crazy really at the time, but it meant that as a business we kept operating and, and obviously none of us thought this was going to go on for, for so long. For any members of the team, um, so the, two, the teams of two didn't work with the other team of two, so if there had been an issue, team one would cover team two and, and so on. In terms of the team, the communication that we had uh, was Zooms, as, as many of us have worked on a, a Zoom team. I felt that I was doing back-to-back -back Zooms, trying to keep people engaged, trying to keep people positive. Um, they were working at home, like many of you guys probably as well, with children. Um, the days were kind of endless and what work did for them was to give them a little bit of normality that, you know, we're going to get through this, we're going to get through this together. Um, and that they needed that leadership for me to say, you know, this is what we're doing. Um, I sent them all a keep your gin up box, which was a, a box that we now retail, but at the time it was done just for them. It had an elastic band in it for when they needed to hold things together, a marble in case they were losing theirs, sanitizer to keep them safe, and then a gin and a tonic if anything ever got too bad. Um, so the keep your gin up box was just a little way of saying, look, we're all still here. Um, and then as the business got busier, the Zooms probably became fortnightly and um, at, the, at that point work took over again a little bit. Um, and it was then when the, the teams of two became really key. So the, the two buddies, or the, the, those two people kept each other going. So it did probably fragment a little bit at that point. We started looking at how do we grow the online side of the business. So as much as we did Zooms with the team, we also did Zooms in tastings. So we did business to business um, Zooms right across the world. So I suppose one of my um, highlights was being able to compete with huge brands, multinational brands, um, because we were able to pitch and present in the Bothy with the fire on um, and show the brand story and the product range to people that I would never have been able to get in front of before. Um, for the US market, for example, we would have, I would have had to be in every state presenting to a team of 30, 40 managers um, for us to be ranged in, in that store. Whereas with the Zoom tastings, we were able to put 100 people on the Zoom and, and deliver the same message. So our Bothy experience in Glam's can seat 30 people. Um, at this point, we were able to do 100 people. So whether it was business to business, we were able to get in front of people and offer them something a wee bit different. It was an experience rather than just another Zoom. We had music on, we had the fire on, and, and hopefully they felt connected. And I suppose connection forms the theme of the business to consumer side of the online. Um, we did Zoom tastings from hen parties that the weddings were cancelled and they were still able to do a, a gin tasting and have a, a bit of a party online um, to corporate tastings for people that hadn't had Christmas parties that they were bringing um, their, their team together. Um, just, you know, your mum and dad that happened to be in one room and in and, and air and you were having a zoom in from Aberdeen. So we were able to do um, individual family taste things um, but also you would join a group of people that you didn't know um, and and what it did highlight was you know we used to use alcohol and music to make life better well nothing's really changed and Covid didn't change that for us we still were able to get people in a room and experience something and and connectivity which I feel overall with with Covid the pause let us disconnect to reconnect and that's something that is integral to, to how we work within the, the brand. It also gave me a chance to, to kind of pick up some projects that had never had the time to, to do because we were at events every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we were on the road. Um, so in August, we launched a rum bothy, which has been fantastic and was a product that we'd been sitting on for quite a while. 
Um, by September, we were able to take the majority of the team back in, in some form, so part furlough, part working. Um, so the team system was still in place, but we were able to physically get back in touch with them. Um, so I was the breach of all the teams, so I would work with the team, um, which probably gets rid of the whole concept of the team of two, but I was able to physically get back in touch at a distance with, with the team, which was really important. It let me know how they were coping, what their thoughts were, how adaptable they wanted to be. Um, somebody on the last meeting asked about um, training and, and CBD. Well, for one of the members of my team, when she saw the growth that we were having online, she knew it was a business need. She, with children and with all the juggling she was doing at home, basically absorbed herself in the world of Amazon on how to grow online business, SEO, so we could manage some of that in-house. Um, and that's been a huge learning curve for her. It's meant she's moved into that side of the business that she, she hadn't really looked at before. Um, October, November, December saw our kind of normal peak in online, but double. So going from 12 to 20 orders a day to 150 plus orders a day. So the pressure that the increase put on our logistics and our fulfillment side of the business um, was only fulfilled really by the dedication and the commitment of, of my team, which um, I, you know, I'm forever thankful for, and to the customer base, because in each box, um, we put in a little card saying, thank you for supporting the gym Bothy, thank you for being part of the, the journey. Um, we're sorry that the, the you know, this has been delivered out with the three days. Normally we're working hard to um, to fulfil your order. Um, and I do think that honesty and connectivity and, and just being human really helped. Um, anyone that ordered a bottle for us, from example, in December, got a little something in. In February this year, they're getting a wee with love chocolate. So I think being human, offering something a little bit more than, than just a box and the post, um, is something that we're trying to work really hard on in the same way as if somebody came to Glam's, they wouldn't just get a bottle and a bag. It would be a thank you. We're really pleased to be working with you and um, try it with this mixer. You know, we're, we're trying to kind of bring that experience virtually. In January, we were awarded um, the best artisan drink producer for Scotland as part of the Rural Business Awards, which um, was a huge highlight for us and um, one because we hardly ever win anything like that because the big guys always um, win those awards but also for the team just to know that what they were doing was really making a difference and it was appreciated um, so that was kind of our highlight for January. We also got our hip flask um, which I know a lot of people think I was mad to, to bring a new product to market in such strange times but I think now more than ever we need to be positive we need to think about we are going to get out of this um, there is always going to be a market. We just needed to keep going. So this is a, a £15 product. It's a supermarket line with hip class spirits, which we, would, we wouldn't and won't do with Gin Bothy. So it meant we could diversify into a volume business to help support our craft business, which um, was something that COVID probably has accelerated. So having said no to supermarkets for years with Gin Bothy, which we'll continue to do, we now have a brand that... Um, we can say yes to, and that will be in all Aldi stores in Scotland in, in April this year. So again, another adaption, but I suppose it, it might not be your original plan, but we kept changing the plan every month this year. The strategy and anything that, that we were working with Scottish Enterprise on kind of went out the window because it was literally week to week, month to month. Um, and I don't know about your businesses, but that's very much how, how I felt it was. In terms of leadership, though, my team needed more than week to week and, and month to month. Um, and with a, I have a two year old, well, just about to be two, and a 13 year old, um, I was conscious that I couldn't bring my A game because I was worried about things and I, I felt that it was coming across. So I started um, something that was a little bit crazy, and some of you may be doing it. But it's the 5am club, so um, with a two-year-old, you can imagine getting up at five o'clock probably wasn't something I had um, a lot of fun in doing. But it gave me from five till half past six every morning um, to focus, to think, focus not fear was kind of where I was coming from. Mentally protect myself, which sits with some of the things Alison was talking about, um, and put myself in a position that this was going to be a positive day. This is where we needed to be and come into work leave everything else behind and, and just focus. And I honestly believe that 
surrounding myself with that focus, key fixers, people that were in the industry, in the business, that were can-do people that could understand the vision and deliver it um, in, a, in quite a quick way sometimes, because we were adapting very quickly, that were flexible, um, was really the success of, of why we've been able to hold it together and, and still have growth. Um, and trim any expenditure. I know you, you probably all have done that, but any of the nice to haves, any of the things that um, we were maybe, we felt we had to do to be part of the industry or um, to be seen to be doing, that was trimmed away. And I was running lean anyway, um, but I really feel that that we trimmed all of that down. Even our insurance, we weren't trading. Um, we had a rebate back on insurance. We had a rebate back on things that we just felt we, we didn't need. So really trimming that down and, and working on um, the essentials rather than the nice to haves were, were a really key part of our survival tactics for 2020. Some of those things um, have meant a bit like the four day week, well, you know, you're able to do it, so why not? Um, our, some of our focuses for 2021 is our plate might be slightly smaller because as I say, we're still not going to be able to do taste things at Glam's till tier one, so God knows when that's going to be. Um, but concentrating on what we can do rather than what we can't um, and, and bring the team along with, with you on that journey. So that's my um, gin journey. Um, any questions or any way I can help, please just shout and yeah, open to questions. Thank you very much. That was really interesting. Thank you. And I'm so, it's good to hear such a positive story coming out. I know it's been hellish for a lot of um, pro pro people that are producing stuff to get them out there and to get people, you know, Get, to get the products out so that's really a, quite a positive thing and I keep saying you're doing lots of different things so and your social media is definitely working so well done. Thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah has anybody got any questions if you want to unmute and come in or if you want to put them on chat you can. I have a couple of questions Kim, one for Kim and one for Kirsty. Um, Kim we do you think when we eventually do get out of this crazy world that we're in that you will change how you do things in the future because you've seen how bits have worked in lockdown um, will you continue to do maybe a, a blend of what you did before and what you did this year? Yep I think that um, the new world I'm not calling it the old world I'm calling it a new world because I think that yes things like shows I realise um, we were really lucky that we had been able to establish a customer base. I know it's quite small in terms of the, the big guys and we have 11,000 um, people on our, our, our database that are, you know, have subscribed to us. So I know that's not huge in, in, in other businesses, but for us, those 11,000 people um, are like 11,000 people coming through my shop door. So I felt that I probably um, didn't spend enough time with them because I was constantly trying to do more shows and meet more people. So I think this year um, it's made us look at not being a busy fool, but did we really need to go to a show every Friday, Saturday, Sunday? And um, did we need to go to every market just to be seen to be there? Because if we didn't go, then another gin company would go. I think um, we're going to be much more focused on our current customers and how we can look after them and retain them more. Um, new markets rather than all, you know, the number of gin companies all going after such a small market. Our visitor market that we can't see at Glam's is a really big like expat community for us overseas. Um, and we've always put them off thinking that we'll get to you one day once we finish the shows. But I think um, what this has shown me is we can still engage with those customers virtually and, and maybe not do as many shows. So yeah, I think the business has changed a bit, not like a four day week, because my guys are all part time anyway, but um, I think my time needs to be much more focused on um, how productive I actually am and that, you know, I've been working in the business for the past, you know, right through COVID as physically the only person that wasn't furloughed at some points. Um, but the best use of my time is is not necessarily standing bottling every day. And I really need to, to, to kind of come out of that a little bit and, and um, give my team the freedom to do what they do and that I can concentrate on some of the some of the other sides of the business. So yes, in answer to that, I think it's changed every part of it. And the one positive thing for me about COVID was it was a pause 
we have grown and grown and grown um, and then kind of plateaued a little bit when the sector um, saturated probably with, with gin. Um, but it's given me time to just stop and think about who's really important, who do we really want to continue working with, who can we collaborate with, what other Scottish businesses um, sit within our product offering and how do we support each other. And ultimately, I think as consumers, we've got to um, support businesses we want to survive and that's shopping local, shopping Scot you know, Scottish um, and promoting each other. Um, and, and I think we forgot a little bit about that in the quest to just do more and more and more. Um, so yeah, it's had quite a big fundamental change to the business. Um, really. Yeah. That's oh, very good. I'm um, sorry, I think Alison's... Alison, do you want to unmute and ask your question? Yeah, um, there's a bit of a sweeping assumption in it as well, so I've said <laughs> it seems to me. <laughs> um, I was just saying that it, it felt like when I was listening to your stories that Kirsty had almost been able to take a step back and plan. I bet it didn't feel like that maybe, but um, and then Tim had to constantly react and adapt um, and move quite fast. So am I right? Um, is that how you normally would have operated? Uh, was 2020 any different and will you consciously do that or do something different when we're out of restrictions? <laughs> okay, will I go first on that one? Um, yeah, I suppose probably from the outside it does look like that was the case. However, at the time when lockdown kicked in, we were actually an academy manager down at the time and um, I stepped into the role of delivering that online program myself so I was very much hands-on and involved in a lot of the grant applications, tenant support, everything like that and I think it's almost during the lockdown period it was so intense the delivery and I was so hands-on that I had to come the end of lockdown take that step back at that first lockdown and say I can't do that again, I cannot do that again because I'm going to burn out and what happens to everyone else if I'm burnt out. So, um, yeah, I think then I got a bit of a focus. I had a good conversation with my board and they were very much focusing me on the bigger picture. At the time, I was not comfortable with writing this three year strategy for the circle at all. I thought, what on earth are we trying to do this for when we're in the middle of such uncertain times? However, it was, I absolutely believe now it was the right decision to get my focus on where it needed to be, which was the bigger picture when this, obviously when we come out of lockdown and what we do next and how we've had to adapt and how we continue to adapt and thrive. So I hope that that strategy may or may not come through with what we've written in it, but it's given me something to think about and it's the bigger picture as well. So I think I've needed that personally as a leader during this time to think about not the day-to-day -day because that would be my go-to. My comfort zone would be to get into the day-to-day -day and I think I've had to step out of that. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, my comfort zone is always the day-to-day. -day. If I can stand and bottle, um, <laughs> and then that is where I go every time. That's probably my happy place subconsciously. <laughs> Scottish Enterprise would say um, they will drag me out of that role um, one day. But yeah, I was absolutely, if I'm honest, exhausted with um, lockdown. For me, nothing changed. I was just doing it with a much, much smaller team and constant worry. Um, and I think juggling as a mum, um, my partner's self-employed as well. So we were literally with no childcare and, and kind of running. I was, I was exhausted, but I was probably mentally and physically exhausted. And I think like that, um, you have to take yourself out of it. Otherwise we were just existing and we've really only done that in the past couple of weeks um, because Christmas was busy anyway. And we were so, so lucky that we were busy at Christmas. But for January, um, we've sat down with the team now and, and Scottish Enterprise, who are kind of like my board, I suppose, in a way, they're, they're the advisors and supporters I have, um, and said, you know, how, how do we even come up with a strategy? Because let's face it, strategy involves some kind of known. And, you know, I just felt we we're in an unknown and still in an unknown in, in so many ways. How do you put a budget together when you don't know where your income streams are, are going to come from? So, um I think business is going to be different. I've accepted that my plate, if I think of it like a food plate, will be very different. Um, from a mindset point of view, I joined, which is a, a Dundee Shelley Booth fitness programme, and 
felt I needed to come completely away and, and do some of my own personal time because I was conscious I was trying to make sure the team were okay but I, I needed to protect exactly like you said what happens if something happens to me um, and that was a big reality with COVID because there was you know it, it wasn't um, who was you know you might not get it there was every chance that one of us could have got it and, and what happened to the business then so yeah I think there's been big reality moments for, for everybody um, I certainly need to be more strategic and realise that I'm sitting on something that is a long-term business and um, just trust that the next month is, is going to come and, and you know strategy will, will take its, its place. Um, and also I think it's the fix of surrounding yourself by people that can keep you focused. I think mm -hmm. when you're a business, albeit on your own, or you are the public face of, you have to have somebody else there that can keep you on track that probably isn't family and, mm -hmm. and separate from the business, whether it be mentorship or whether it be SE or a board, um, you, you need you need that support. And certainly I think we've needed that in COVID um, mm -hmm. as much as our teams have needed us. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant, thank you. And um, there's another question from Dan. I don't know if he wants to unmute and ask his question. Yeah, sure. Um, it was just for Kirsty. I just wondered, looking back, Kirsty, at the um, start of the circle, um, having a smaller team and whether you think that would have made a four day working week a bit more difficult, would it have left you too stretched or do you think it's something that you could have included in the business plan from the very get go? Uh, well, that's a really good question, actually. Um, I think, again, it's back to that point. I personally, alongside the, the very small team that we started up with, well, I was involved in absolutely everything. So I'm not sure that that would have been the right time to implement a four day working week when we were already fairly stretched in the beginning. And I think I was, I mean, I was flying up and down the corridors making teas and coffees myself um, for five years ago. So um, yeah, I, I think things have evolved and it, it was the right time as we obviously got to a staff team of 14 and we're looking at actually roles, responsibilities, how we divvy up that time. It's not to say that we don't obviously as a team cover certain aspects of each other's jobs and that kind of thing. But yeah, right in the beginning, I don't think it would have been right. But I would say that I have always wanted to look at the model of work that we are operating under and actually do things quite differently. So it has been an aspiration of mine to get here. I just didn't expect it would happen when it did really so yeah i've got a wee question as well on the the four day week we're doing our policy of like different flexible working and um a four day week is certainly something that we've we're looking at how do you choose which day everybody gets off or is it <clears throat> you know because everybody obviously wants a monday and a friday to have a long <laughs> weekend is that easily um, um managed well, it is for the people who do the rota, Paul and Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't get involved in the rota. There's a reason. There's the detail part of things where I'm never really allowed to be involved in the level of detail <laughs> like that. So I'm pushed to the side as Paul and Ruth typically get on with that. So it, yes, a huge thing again, one of our values is around fairness. So you're right, people would want a Monday off or a Friday off. And for me, it was about how do we do this in a way that actually everybody gets that? So thankfully, Paul and Ruth worked together to create this great rota system that gives everyone every third week, you will get a long weekend. Um, you might have the Friday one week, you might have the Monday the other week. So if you want to talk detail of rota, talk to them, <laughs> not me. <I> will. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. I was, just, I was just intrigued because we've been going over this um, quite a lot, um, Alison and I, looking at the different yeah. things we can offer. And that was like, you can all get the Friday, you can all no. get the Monday, but I like that and it's a flexible thing. It is, really, uh, yeah. You know what, actually, people then, I think uh, you just you know that you've got one of the days and then you know you've got a long weekend coming up and it just it really just I think it helps that you're yeah. not saying it's actually consistently the same day either because things do come up you've got yeah. meetings on a Friday you've got things on a Monday it gives you a little bit of flexibility as well so yeah, yeah I think and as I say they, they I will volunteer them they're not here um but <laughs> have a chat with them about that they'll be absolutely delighted to talk to you about it <laughs> 
Well, well, don't worry, I'll pick their brains. Good, good. <laughs> I'm, I'm due a catch up with Ruth anyway. So okay, that's good. <laughs> but good over a glass of wine, she wouldn't even know I'm doing it. So it's fine. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't. There's no. There's not any other questions. Just um, Barry saying great stories and how inspiring women can adapt and be dynamic. Wonderful. So well done, girls. Um, I don't think there's any other questions, and I think we're going to get whisked away quite soon. Alison, I don't know if you had any other questions. Don't really. Um, I guess, you know, I think um, everybody reads, you know, you follow people on LinkedIn, don't you? You're always reading about people that, you know, work four hour weeks and, and bizarre things. But do either of you have anybody that, you know, you kind of look at that does things in, in a way that just kind of fits with, with what your ethos is? Never mind if it's about productivity, but just general, you know, um, the, the hints and tips about business that you always read and go, oh, I should have, have a go at that. Hmm. No, but I'm getting there. Yeah. <laughs> the 5 a.m. club um, is probably the first time I've taken any kind of time to self-learn, really, um, because I've just not had the time as, but I realise my excuses are the same as everybody else's, you know, and everybody's a busy, whether they're mums or they've got life going on around them, that unless you make time, you can't ever develop. Um, so I would say uh, I'm not there yet, but um, some of the mindfulness books, the Oprah's books, and the, certainly this 5 a.m. one that I'm working with just now um, are about habit changes. And I think whenever the new world comes back to where we are, the last thing you want to do is, is feel that this has all been in vain and we go back to being the same, well, for me, it's personally, the, the busy fool in a way mm -hmm. that I was before and missing out on so many opportunities um, to connect with, with customers, with family, with friends, all the things that we say we miss. Are we actually going to step up and, and stay true to that once that once this new world is, is open. So um, I'm trying to use this time to change my working habits and mindset so I can really do the things that I, I'm missing before work just takes over and I'm back to where we were in 2019. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would I would agree with everything that you've said there actually it's a very similar position and I think when I started the circle it launched in November 2016 I was at the point myself of burnout and I was actually not looking after myself at all and trying my best to get through the day and um, working ridiculous hours, just trying to do everything, but a busy fool basically and not having the same approach that I've got now. And I think I'm influenced by lots of different things around the habit setting, the 5am club, the um, mindset, all, all of this has actually come really from probably 2018 when I started to make some changes into the way I was actually operating the business and with the support of my board with the support of the senior management team I've been able to implement a lot of that and step back a bit but I go in and out of that journey and I think for me right now it's about creating as you say that environment that post-COVID, what does that look like? And I don't want to go back to that. And I know I don't want to go back to that. So how do I ensure that I've got my lifestyle the way it should be to operate that business, which in turn obviously gives the staff the best effects as well. So, yeah. yeah. yeah brilliant. That was really interesting. Thank you so much for your time and um, all your uh, lovely insights. It was really interesting. Um, are we to get zipped out of this room? I think we've only got a couple of seconds left. <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> so um, I will soon get, I wish it was a funny, you know, we all sort of just disappeared yeah. like Star Trek, <laughs> but it doesn't happen that way. <laughs> so. Now, can everybody see my presentation? Excellent. Okay. So, good afternoon everybody. I am Pamela and I'm the Operations Director at One Office. Um, One Office are a managed IT, telephony and um, print service provider. And today I'm going to be talking about how you can get the best out of technology to support your productivity. So I will get started. Now, what's right for you? There are so many options out there today. Um, there's so many tools, there's so many softwares, there's so many add-ons. 
Firstly, you need to determine what your business requirements are, what your business needs, and then you can find out what tools meet those needs. It might be one tool, it might be multiple tools, usually multiple. You can do this by yourself or you can work with a partner to assist you. Um, trying to spread yourself across too many tools or using the wrong tools or using tools incorrectly can decrease your productivity rather than increase. Um, once you find the right tools for your business, I would highly recommend that you streamline it across your business so that everybody is putting information in the same location to share, collaborate, access it, and they're communicating effectively across the business. We are Microsoft Silver Partners, so we focus on the Microsoft range and third-party tools that enhance the user's experience. So I'm going to talk a bit about some of these tools and I'm going to show you some of them. So I'll start off with the simple but effective tools. Um, I'm sure you either use have you, or have used both of these in the past or now. The first one is the password manager. The password manager does what it says. It manages your password. It stops you wasting time resetting passwords, mistyping passwords. It gives you instant access to website accounts and it, it fixes compromised passwords. So it increases your security. It's a really helpful tool. I'm not going to go into any of the password managers today because there's so many of them, but if anybody wants any hits or hints or guidance on which ones to use, if you drop me a message, I can point you in the right direction. Um, the next simple but effective tool is Microsoft To Do. For those of you that don't use it or haven't been in, it allows you to plan, schedule, delegate, track, and you can access it across multiple devices. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to jump into my Microsoft To Do just to give you a wee overview of what I use it for and what I find it helpful for. Okay, so this is Microsoft To Do. You can jump between accounts. So I set up a demonstration account. I personally use this for my personal use and for work. So I jump between personal and work accounts. I can create task lists. From in task lists, I can have different tasks. I can star them to highlight them to say that they're important tasks, put notes, add them to my day, remind myself about them, add a due date for them, set repeat tasks so I don't have to input them regularly, and I can sign them to someone else. And I can add files and notes. So when I come to complete the task, I have all the information I need to complete that task. Because we add everything up and do all this, you can see an overview if you add things to your day. So you can stay focused on what you plan to complete that day and see if you have completed it or if there's anything outstanding. You can see your important tasks so that you can concentrate on them first, clear them first before you move on to any other tasks. I can see an overview of what I have planned for myself. So I can see today, tomorrow, or future. I can see all my tasks in an overview so I can decide where I'm going to schedule to complete these tasks. And I can drop it down so it's easy to view. I can see all my completed tasks. I've not been very busy, but if you see all your completed tasks, you can give yourself a wee pat on the back. And I can see, just like I can assign tasks to other people, people can assign tasks to me. Now, in our meetings, we have daily meetings just now because we're not in the office and we have weekly, weekly management meetings. We don't take minutes from those meetings anymore. We have a task list for those meetings. During the meeting, people tasks are created. We document them and we assign them to the appropriate people. It means when we come back to that meeting the next day or the next week, we can see any tasks that have been outstanding and discuss why they're outstanding before we move on to the next agenda. We can also see how long that task at the bottom right, how long that task has been open for when it was created to see if any further action is taken to help you manage people. Now your to-do links with your outlook. So we've all done it where you flag an email and you mean to go back to it. You can have it show in here so that you pick up those emails and actually take the action that you wanted to do with that email and drop down to see that you've completed them. And likewise, your to-do links with your Outlook. So if you're working task lists with an Outlook, all of your lists that you add come in to your task list. And I'm going to jump back on to my presentation. Now, communication is key. Communication costs companies thousands each year. 
miscommunication, sorry. <laughs> there we go, no miscommunication costs companies thousands each year. The pandemic has forced businesses to operate differently and Teams became one of the most popular business tools used. It helps you communicate, it helps you collaborate, and it centralises your tools and all your applications. So now what I'm going to do is most businesses will probably use Teams, but what we find is that businesses don't use Teams to its full potential. So I'm going to give you a wee oversight of the different things that you can do within Teams and how it can benefit you. So activities, you have activities. It shows here if somebody has mentioned you, so you can do at and mention somebody like you do on Twitter, and it highlights a comment to you for you to focus on it. You can see if somebody's reacted to one of your comments that you've put on and you know they've seen it. You see a list of if people have video or voice called you and you've missed it. Not only does it give you information that that's happened here, it also opens the window in the right hand pane so you don't have to navigate away if there's any action you need to take. On here there's a form that needs to be included, I can, I can complete it from within this window. You have a chat function. Now, the chat function is hugely helpful because instead of sending emails and clogging up your emails, you can send, send direct messages. You can have multiple people within a chat. You can have individual people in a chat. It can be internal. It can be external. But this keeps everything clean and it organises your conversation so you can refer back to it and see what you spoke to somebody about before. From within here, you can drop documents by dragging and dropping them into your message or adding them as the, a standard attachment. You can add smiley faces, gifts, however you want. When you attach a file, not only does it go into the chat, it also goes onto your files. These files can be launched and you can edit them from within Teams, or you can open them in your desktop app, or you can open them in the browser, or you can download the document. You can see the organizer information, like the history and the organizer information about your organization. You can see activities. You can launch lots of different applications. So applications that you work on, you can bring in and centralize within your team so people don't have to leave the environment. It makes it very quick and simple for them to access. You can launch a video call, an audio call. You can share your screen with that person you're talking to. You can add people into the chat or you can pop out of that chat. So I can still continue the conversation, but work elsewhere in Teams. You've then got your actual teams. So your teams can be a department or you might be working on a project and you have a team of people working on that project. You can have external and internal people as members of a team and you can create channels within the team. If you have a lot of projects you're doing and you have the same channels on each team, you can create templates to save you setting it up every time. On here I've got technical department and I've created the general channel. You've always got your posts where you're here, you can navigate to. It tells you everything that's happening on this channel. So everybody's informed, everybody's up to date, everybody's up to speed. You can have conversations with the entire team in one location. You can work and collaborate across your applications. So I've added for an example on here, Microsoft Forms. Again, a Microsoft product doesn't have to be a Microsoft product. We can all create and edit this form to just agree on the form to be sent out to customers to get customer reviews or whatever it might be. You can drop your files into your um, chat. And again, just like your chat function at the top, your files drop into the files folder, organizing it for you. You can open your files from your SharePoint, your file store, or from your cloud storage. And you can launch meetings with the team for to be scheduled later using your schedule assistance, which I'll show you in a minute, or to create a meeting now so you can speak to everybody quickly. You can go into your calendar. Now your calendar synchronizes with your Outlook calendar. From here, you can click on whichever meeting you're joining and join it there. You can chat with the participants for the meeting. You can edit it. You can add people. You can create a meeting now, or you can schedule a meeting for later. If you're scheduling a meeting, it's got a very helpful scheduling assistant, where as you add people, it shows their availability. So when you're sending out a meeting, you know the people are available. Or you can create events like this one, where you can have breakout rooms and invite people externally as well. We have a call function. So this is the basic setup of the call function. I haven't added contacts because this is a demonstration account, but you can have speed dials, you can add contacts, you can see your history of your calls, and you can add voice, you can read, hear your voicemail. You don't have to have voicemail, you can turn it off if you like. 
from here you can pull everybody up, you can video call them, audio call them, you can send chats to them, and you can see their availability. So if you're going to speak to them or you want to speak to them and you can see they're unavailable, instead you can send them a quick instant chat and if they're maybe on hold, they might be able to respond and quickly answer your question without actually having to speak to them, or you can ask them to call you in their free. We'll come back to the calls and what you can do with that later. Here centralizes your files. So the files I viewed recently, it shows me all the files within my Microsoft team I have access to, I can see, I can search for, it shows me the general location of them. And I can access my cloud storage platforms, again, all centralized within Teams, so I don't have to leave and work with different applications. I like to add in my task by planner and to-do. I showed you my to-do list and I work from it all the, all the time. I can see my tasks again from Teams so I don't have to leave the application. And my planner, we have planned tasks on a project. I can access it and drop down and tick to see whether I've completed them, assign them to anybody else or add new task lists from within here. Now the approvals, I'm gonna mention the approvals but I'll explain why the approval is helpful just a little bit later on. And I'm going to jump back on to my slide. Now, continuing with the importance of communication, you have to be contactable from clients or from your colleagues. Um, and you need a telephone system that support, supports your flexible working environment. We supply two systems, they're Horizon and 3CX. And they get referred to as a phone system. You might have heard somebody say a VoIP system, which is voice over IP, or a PBX system, public branch exchange. What these systems do is they allow you to work as if you're in the office. You continue to answer calls, transfer calls seamlessly, maintaining your professional image. You can answer and make calls, transfer them on mobiles, laptops, desktops, or your traditional handsets. So everybody can get a hold of you. You can set up web conferences where people don't have to download anything, they can access it from a web browser. You can protect your mobile number. So when you're phoning, you're phoning from your office phone and you're seeing who's phoning you from the contact list within the office. Um, you can get hold of colleagues and see if they're available before you call them or bring them into conference calls. You can record calls, you can schedule out of hours and voicemails for out of hours or your, um, your normal business hours or holiday periods. You can divert calls to mobiles or different numbers. You can set up welcome messages um, and menus and you can handle credit card payments securely and it, our system integrates with your team so you can have the best of both worlds. Your other option you have is you can convert teams into your phone system and the ways we can do this for you is we can add Microsoft call plans to your teams turning it into a light touch hosted phone system. At the moment the call plans are quite expensive and they don't have the full functionalities of a standard VoIP system um, so the best option to that, if it, that was the route you wanted to go down, is through direct routing, which converts Teams into a business phone system. It's more cost effective um, and you get more of the functionality. Now, automation. There's no better way for technology to support productivity than through automation. Microsoft have a product called Microsoft Power Automate. It allows you to automate business processes. It's the future for organisations. The list of applications that you can use to integrate into Microsoft Automate grows constantly and you can use it to automate workflows between your favourite applications, services, syncing files, getting notification, getting data and much more. Some examples of this is emails. You might get emails in with attachments and you want all the attachments to drop into your OneDrive. We can use Power Automate to make that happen automatically. You can collect data that's going out about your business through social media and pull on to tell colleagues and tell update information. You can use it to automate the approval process. And I'll take you through that just as an example so you can see what can happen. Here's an example of a workflow which gets done in the background. If somebody wanted to request a laptop um, or a mobile phone or whatever it might be, we can have templates created from them where they, they complete the template. This template automatically when they submit it flows to the appropriate person for approval. You can decide who the appropriate person is or what the triggers are. So it might be a monetary value, it might be what category the item comes under. This can come through to the person for approval through their email or through their teams on that notification, the approval process that I gave you, I showed you early within Teams. Um, if they approve it, it can go back to the submitter to tell them it's been approved and it can go to the person that's responsible for purchasing with all the information intact so they have it there to purchase the item. Once they purchase the item, 
it can flow through, they can update and put the delivery date that is due, it can tell the submitter and it can pass automatically onto the accounts department. The accounts department then have full traceability, they can see what's happened and they have all the information at hand to add onto your accounting system and also to marry up against their invoices. Likewise, if the approver rejects the submission, you can have notification go to the person that submitted it to tell them it's been rejected and tell them why. Everything is flown through and it's got very, very little human contact and it happens automatically and you can track, trace and review at any time. The last thing I'm going to talk about is Microsoft Power BI. Microsoft Power BI is Microsoft Power Business Intelligence. You can pull data to insights. You can pull data to insights, make sense of data to make informed, confident business decisions. You can streamline and automate and simplify repetitive tasks that take up time. You can pull from multiple sources. So things like your Sage account, Zero Excel, just to name a few. You can extract the data and bring it into a readable report that you can make sense of. You can present it however you like to see and whatever is clear to you. It's business intelligence you can add before, which we've got now. And the reports can be embedded in a web page or they can be embedded in Teams. Again, not clogging up your email. Um, so you can see them and pick them up wherever you are. These are examples of some, how some of the reports look, and you can access them across multiple devices. You're freeing up people's time and you're minimising human error because people are not manually inputting, you're extracting the information. They're visually appealing and clear. But also, although they're pretty, you might not have time to sit and look at reports, so you can set triggers. So if you have a report that is created that tells you each month, what your turnover has been. And if you're below your expected, you can set triggers. So it sends an email or a notification through to you to tell you, you need to look at this report, you're not on track. And you can look at the information, find what you need and take action. Just like that, you can set up maybe it, triggers for a positive reason that you're exceeding expectations, that you need to go back to somebody to tell them that they're doing really well or a department's doing really well. And it's always good to get good news. I would like to thank you for your time and um, I think we're going to have time for questions but if you do have any further questions or want more information my email address is there, my telephone number, the website or you can contact me through Teams. Thank you. Thanks very much Pamela, that was great. Just when you think you're tech savvy you realise that you're absolutely not so there's loads there for me to pick up on that's for sure. That's, that's brilliant, thank you. Um, next we'll hand over to Stuart, Stuart Gray is from Cooperative Learning Consultants. Hello, Stuart. Oh, you'll need to unmute yourself. Sorry, Ross, my, my screens all went black there just at the opportune moment, so sorry about that. I'll just get myself sorted. Hopefully you can hear me okay. had an interesting experience in the other breakout room where I have two screens here and it kept shifting on both screens. So Pamela's probably bored of me saying this because it's happened already, so bear with me. Ross, you need to get your best nodding head on because I need you to tell me if what you can see is what you should be seeing. So I'll just open up. I'll just open up the presentation just now. Um, I will share my screen. I'll also uh, tell you about the monstrosity behind me whilst that's happening. I uh, moved into a house in May and although there is a beautiful window in the middle there because it's beautiful because it's brand new, the sides are threadbare and freezing and I don't know how well you can see it but we actually had to put kitchen roll in Sorry, we actually found kitchen roll in there, which was soaking up water that was seeping through. So that was a nice discovery when we got the we got the windows changed. So so we bit like the the house that, that that Jack built, but we're getting there. We're getting there, folks. The presentation is opening on my screen, and it's completely black. So Ross, you may see my notes on my presentation, or you may just see the PowerPoint. Can you nod if you just see the PowerPoint? No, we're just seeing notes here. Well, just seeing the notes. PowerPoint and some notes. Yeah, yeah. Right. How about now? How about now? What are you seeing now? Uh, still the same. Excellent. <laughs> right, how about now? Oh, that's it. That, there's your presentation. Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. 
Grand. Okay, ok. Well, uh, afternoon, afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks, thanks for uh, joining us this afternoon. Um, today, the session that I'm going to lead is about productivity at your next meeting, because uh, it's all about asking ourselves how we make the precious thing together more productive and engaging. It's a small group, folks, so I'm going to be at different points asking for feedback on some things at, at random. So if you wouldn't mind just unmuting yourself when I ask you to do that. Um, I understand you might not be totally up for that, so if that is the case, um, please just prepare to share it in the chat. Um, so, here we go. If something out the way here. So, can you see these objectives here, Ross, the Nodder professional? Thank you, Nodder. Thank you very much. You're doing a great job there. Much needed, very important. So, thanks very much for that. As I said, um, this is all about um, trying to make sure that we make the precious time we have together productive and engaging. And I don't know about you, I felt that in the past, meetings that I've attended have not, not always been the most particularly productive and of course we need to think about why, why we're bothering we want to make things better for whoever it is we're, we're working with and as you can probably guess from our uh, company name we're called cooperative learning consultants we believe that collaboration is really important and that you can't work um, in a vacuum you have to work with the people around you of course to, to make things better so in 20 minutes i hope to give you a, a, a sample of how you can make your meetings more productive we can do lots more to um, help help you with this but in the time I've got this afternoon I'm hoping to show you a few things that you can take away and use. Just something to see here and I'm going to continually come come back to this um, and I'm not I'm not making any apologies for repeating repeatedly saying this but I'm going to model um, what we would advocate could happen on remote learnings and practice what I preach. So in, in the sense of what we do, we are the how more than the what, if that makes sense. So we're finding more and more people are approaching us and saying, here is our content, can you please do the how, can you please help us with how we present this in a more productive and engaging way. So they provide the customer the content, the what, and we provide them with the how, how it's, how it's done. Um, just something to share with you. Um, that I received from a colleague. This was a, a conversation with a colleague uh, from North Lanarkshire who said uh, the, the fall, who shared the following with us. I hope that I die during a staff okay. meeting because the transition between life and death will be so subtle that I won't notice. They carried on to say that they were pretty sure that they, the person who was leading the meeting wouldn't know if they had uh, continued to live or or die. So this this um, really spurred us on to try and change the way that meetings are, are held. And I suppose the other thing to think of here is people don't really say, oh goody, I've got a meeting today. It's not kind of the way people people think about these things. Um, this is another another thing just to share with you, just as a wee tongue-in-cheek thing. Are you lonely? Are you tired of working on your own? Do you hate making decisions? Then why not hold a meeting? You can get noticed, see people, feel important, explain things you don't understand, talk about your personal issues, impress your colleagues and gossip, all on company time. Meetings, the practical alternative to work. So, as I said, I am going to model um, what we would promote happening in a remote meet meeting. So again, practice what I preach. Hopefully you'll get sick of me saying that because that's the intention. And in terms of starting off, we start off as uh, we mean to go on. So I'm going to ask you to prepare an answer to a, a question and I'm going to uh, get people to answer just at random. So I'm going to ask you to be prepared to share your name, your role, and one thing that you enjoyed over the weekend that has just passed us by. I'm going to model this answer first before I ask somebody to share. My name is Stuart. And I work for Cooperative Learning Consultants. And one thing I enjoyed over the weekend is discovering a new board game because obviously board games are the new cinema and the new nightclub and the new going to the football and the new all the things that we enjoy doing that we can't do just now. The board game is called Carcassonne, which I don't know if you've heard before, but it's actually really good. So highly recommend that. Um, but I'm going to just get some feedback now. So hopefully I can see participants here. So can I ask Bobby, Bobby, would you please share your response to that question for me? 
Hi, Stuart here, Bobby Lamond, as you can see, uh, my role is a development leader, so a new business development leader, I suppose you could say, um, for Marsh Commercial Insurance Brokers. Um, in Dundee, we used to be called Clark Thompson, but Marsh Commercial mm -hmm. is now. And one thing I enjoyed over the weekend was going out for a walk, a winter's walk, a bit of snow on the ground, the sun was shining, um, so in the, in the Perthshire I would say hills, but it wasn't really a hill. So the Perthshire countryside uh, was what I enjoyed. You could have, you could have really shown off off there, eh, Bobby, and said it was a big mountain or a big Munro, and would have been none the wiser. So there you go. But thank you for yeah, sharing. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. thanks. And uh, Carrie, if you would mind sharing for us, Carrie. Hi, uh, my name's Hi. Carrie. Um, I work at VNA Dundee. Um, and one thing I enjoyed over the past weekend, which I'm not copying your promise, but going for a nice walk with my dog. Um, so yeah, I just looked along the riverside. It was lovely. Nice, <laughs> nice. Uh, I, I, I don't live in Dundee, but I'm from Dundee. Riverside seems to be the place at this moment in time to be meeting everybody. You walk past everybody you know, but and it really does prove Dundee's a, a big village when you go down to the riverside. So, so thanks for that, folks. Um, you, you'll notice I've only taken feedback from, from a couple. Ross, can you just nod if you can see the bit that you're supposed to see, contact activity? Yep, yeah, perfect. Doing well this time. Good stuff. So I only uh, took feedback from a couple. You might not want to hear from, from everybody, but the whole intention there is that the first thing you do is engage and involve the people who are taking part. And typically a meeting might be about one person leading uh, the group who just kind of follow that. And the point of this example is not actually what you did over the weekend, although it was very interesting. Okay, the point of asking you that was not because I'm desperately interested in the answer, but it's to make sure that you're understanding that you'll be expected to take part in some way. So everyone is engaged. Uh, and um, of course, if you know the people in the meeting already, you don't need to get them to introduce their, their name and their role every time. But what you're looking to ask here is a question that everyone can answer. And that's what I did. It was nothing to do with uh, business, nothing to do with work, just a random question that everyone can answer. And of course, we can give you tons of, tons of different questions that you could ask at, at, that, at that point. Alrighty, so just to kind of have a wee reflection of uh, meetings that you may have experienced, certainly these these could describe some of the meetings I've been in, involved in. I want us to just consider now a wee bit ghosts of meetings past. So this includes both remotely as well as in person. So the, regardless of the platform, including online, these are some of the issues that you, we might experience in, in meetings. So for example, you might have just one person talking, so the facilitator doing all the talking and being bored of their own voice. And I know that I found this to be true in the past as well. In terms of interaction, there might not be much or there might be no interaction whatsoever. It might be a meeting that involves the transmission of information rather than deciding on any accent, actions. And I suppose the thought there I always have is, can this be communicated in a memo rather than it being shared in a meeting where people are just sitting listening the entire, the entire time? It might be that um, all the decisions are done to the facilitator and the facilitator's name is against all of the actions. Um, it might be that it is a poor waste of time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. A couple of other things just to uh, highlight here. I don't want to read through the entire list there, but single issue grandstanding. I'm sure we've experienced that one person, one issue thing. And you either in your head or roll in your eyes, say, here we go again um, when that happens. And being put on the spot and being unprepared. And I've been in that situation where I've overpromised something that I'd can't do or want to do in a bigger group because of the situation and another one there is little accountability so you just turn up to the meeting and the meeting happens to you rather than with you. I want us to just uh, engage if we can with that list so you should see on the left hand side that is just the list reproduced again on the left hand side. You may or may not have seen the one that bugs you or haunts you and I can uh, I might ask you to um, add one of your own here but I do want you to think about which one of these ghosts haunts you the most. 
just realised I should have wrote, written haunt there because that's much more in keeping with ghosts of meeting past. But I've written bugs you. So which one bugs you the most? You could add your own there if you want, like I, like I said. But just to give you a wee bit of thinking time here, I'll share with you my answer to this and then I'll give you a wee bit of time and then I'll ask for feedback at, at random like I did um, a, wee, a wee short minute ago. So the one I would um, want to see here is one person talking or in particular, I had a member of staff who was in my department in my previous job and she never said a single thing in any meeting and what frustrated me the most was in between times informally when we were in the staff room or in the car park or walking through the corridor she was quite happy to complain or moan about actions or decisions that had been made but when it came to the meeting she just wasn't offering any of her input there so if I could get you folks for the next say 30 seconds or so just to prepare um, and answer to that question and I'll come back for you in 30 seconds and just ask for some feedback at random if I can. Thank you. Alrighty, um, Lindsay, Lindsay, if you could uh, unmute yourself, please, and give it's me actually your Gary. It's actually Gary Manini, Stuart. Sorry. No, no bother at all. No bother but at all, Gary. Go for it. My partner hijacked my iPad since the last time I was on Zoom. Um, my one, my one is a single issue grandstanding. Is always a terrorist in a meeting, which really annoys me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like that. I like that. A terrorist. I've never gone to that extreme, but I know exactly. I know exactly what what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. So thank you. Thanks for that, Gary. Uh, and I'll go to Alex. Alex, are you there, Alex? Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Do you mind? It's kind of similar to um, sort of one talking, but um, I sometimes get quite frustrated with a lot of the meetings that we have um, at the moment. Um, if there's no sort of agenda um, to begin with. Um, then it does sort of feel like not only is one person talking, but they are, you know, sort of just making the decisions in, in general and there's there's no really, um, not really any room for input. So, yeah, that's kind of something that I find quite frustrating. Yeah, ab absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for, for that, Alex. Um, yeah. So, again, folks, I'm just modelling and practising what, what I preach here. And one thing to say before I move on is that don't be, don't be frightened. Um, by that thinking time there so like that 30 seconds I, I gave you could perhaps feel like 30 hours you know and you you find yourself sometimes wanting to fill a uh, dead time but don't be frightened people getting that preparation time is really really important so try not to jump in at that at that point before people have been been given that opportunity um again the content that we've just spoken about here is not the main point okay you put whatever question you want to ask in there the, the main point here is that it's a way to ensure people will get a personal response to a question and you're getting engagement and you're not straying from the point so I've actually given you a forced choice there if you think about it so quite often you might find a meeting strays off from a uh, topic x onto topic y but that's not really possible here there's no tan tangents taken because I'm giving you that that forced choice I'm also ensuring that everyone's accountable so I'm giving you thinking time I'm letting you know I'm going to take feedback at random um, so everyone should be engaged with the stuff and be ready to contribute and discuss because I'm politely informing you that in 30 seconds in this example I might ask you to give us to give us some some feedback Okay, so again, remember the content, what I'm giving you here is not what's important, it's the way, way I'm doing it. One of the um, researchers in leadership is a, a guy that we've um, 
uh, engaged with quite a bit is a guy called Michael Fullan. You may have heard of him. And just to say here, he talks about tacit knowledge. And what he means by that is that we work with people who've got a wealth of experience and knowledge and they just know what they're doing with their job. You might not be able to write that knowledge down, but it's just that they know the way that they do the job. They've got the knowledge and the experience and they just do it. So why wouldn't you want to tap into that tacit knowledge? And uh, like Alex said, just one person talking is not allowing you to tap into that array of knowledge that is in, in front of you. So capturing these contributions of these people is really important. You actually can't afford to let that tacit knowledge uh, go, to, go to waste. Ross, can you do your best nodding again? Do you see consensus on the PowerPoint? Is it moved on? No, it should say consensus on a white screen. No. <laughs> Sorry, folks. We'll try that again. How about now, Ross? No. What am I doing here? Okay. Whilst I try and fix this, I might stop my share and restart it to see if that fixes the, the issue. I'll just um, speak through the next part and I'll give you a wee bit of thinking time again. And that thinking time will be me trying to fix the presentation uh, at the same time. So making good use of time there. So before, what we just did there was we looked for a personal response to a question. This time I'm going to up the ante a wee bit and I'm going to um, ask you to contribute towards a consensus. I'm just going to ask you to pretend that we are all working for the same company and I'm going to put a proposal to you that I want you to agree or disagree with. Okay, so I'll read out the proposal. Don't worry, when I come back, hopefully with everything working properly again, you'll see the proposal um, on, on the screen and you can engage with it a wee bit better. So the proposal is, our proposal is that we would like to introduce a blanket ban on accessing emails out of office hours. Okay, so our proposal is that we would like to introduce a blanket ban on accessing emails out of office hours. And what I want you to do with this, how I want you to engage with this, is to say, or to think at this moment in time before you say it, do you agree or disagree with this proposal and why? So just going to try and fix the presentation here. So hopefully you're having some thinking time whilst I sort this. Excellent. So you don't see my notes, Ross, you just see the white screen. Thumbs up. Perfect. Perfect. So hopefully you should see the proposal on the screen. So this time, as I said, I'm up in the ante a wee bit here. I'm asking you to express an opinion, agree or disagree and why. And again, be prepared to share your feedback. So I'll give you just about a minute to do that. Okay, thanks folks. Emily, can I ask you to come in here and uh, share your response to this question? Yes, certainly. I would say disagree to the statement as I feel we need to be flexible with our customers um, and need to communicate them in various ways um, with, with them. So I would disagree. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that, Emily. Um, just conscious of time, folks, I would take um, some, some more feedback from you other than just Emily's there, but thank you for, for that, Emily. Um, what I'm going to ask you to do, because this is a wee bit about consensus, is just in the chat function, folks, I know you've had um, Emily's input there. Um, I might also add here that um, it's good for people's mental health and well-being to be away from their emails. So I, that might be a reason why you agree with it. But in the chat box, in the chat box, if you could please write 
A, if you agree with the proposal, or D, if you disagree with the proposal, because I'm looking to get consensus here. So whilst you're, whilst you're doing that, okay, I just want to remind you that again, the content here is not important. And I've told you that I've just kind of made this, made this question up for you to engage with something to get consensus on. It's the way that we've done this to get the thoughts of the participants that is important. And again, my partner talks a wee bit, we talked over this before before I, I prepared for this afternoon. My partner was saying that so often people say that things happen to them, decisions are made to them rather than with them. So that's why I think getting a consensus in, in this way is possibly a, a good way, a good way to go about it. Um, folks, hopefully in this short time, I've uh, been able to put across these three things. It's about informal engagement. And again, just to talk a wee bit about how I've modelled that informal engagement, I've asked you um, to uh, share some information about yourself, which is not necessarily related to work. In fact, it's not related to work at all. So the informal engagement is there so that people are, are, are contributing from the start and they understand that they're expected to do, which of course leads into accountability. We want people to be accountable. We want people to contribute. And of course, having a clear purpose and outcome is also hopefully what has come across here too. Our contact details are there. Um, you are most welcome to get in touch with us um, via our email address there. You have one thing to do though before my session is finished. I'm going to move on to the very last um, slide and I'll put this back in case anybody wants to note down our contact details. Um, the last thing that you are going to be asked to do is to write down in three words in the chat, please, three words maximum, what you're taking away from this session. It does not have to be a sentence. It could just be three random words. But once you have done those three random words in the chat, we are done, folks. Thank you very much for your time. I will put the contact details screen back up there in case anybody needs it. But if you can put your comment in the chat, that is us, folks. Thank you very much for your time and attention this afternoon. Thanks very much Stuart, that was super. Um, just seeing all the messages in the chat now, so I think we're all taking away um, largely the same thing there and I think engagement is just key. I mean we we know it, um, you know, more than anyone really just now, we're running all these online events and we're trying to vary the content and trying to just do something different um, because, you know, I think we're all getting the Zoom fatigue and, you know, it's, it's, everyone's just nothing like as excited as they were previously about going on another Zoom call. So um, I think your approach is really refreshing. Uh, so thank you very much for that. That was really good. Um, what we'll do is we've got, um, we've got a little bit of time for some questions. So I would just like to um, open up to the members in the room. If you have questions for either Stuart or Pamela, um, just feel free to ask. And again, don't make me pick on you, because like Stuart, I will. <laughs> um, uh, one thing that I'll just kick off by saying um, to Pamela is Microsoft To Do. I've never heard of it before, uh, never seen it before. And oh, really? Yeah, yeah, and like I say, I consider myself to be relatively tech savvy, so um, that is something that I'm going to check out. I started getting into a habit of putting my to-do list in Evernote, but yeah. my Evernote is just my dumping ground for things that will get done at some point, but probably not anytime soon. So as you can imagine, I don't get anything done. So um, I'm yeah. hoping if I could use something like that, I might be able to be more productive. Well, that is good. I hope it helps you. It's usually available with most Microsoft Office suites and you can get it. It follows you so. It follows you on your phone. So, um, yeah, on your phone, on your device. So hopefully it helps. Yeah, well, that's maybe not a bad thing. Like I say, as long as I get the stuff done, then it can, yeah, that's that's fine. So, yeah, I'll definitely be definitely be checking that out. Um, just a, a question for you, Stuart, as well. I don't know if you've managed to engage with um, many sort of sales professionals or or. Uh, you know, business development type people, because, you know, if you could incorporate some of this into how people deliver likes of their sales pitch and that, I mean, that could be so effective. 
I don't know if that's that's a market that you've thought about before. Yeah, right? like like I like I said at the like I said at the start, people at people are like you've you've experienced have said, oh right, yeah, this is a different way of putting putting our information across. So we 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 include training events. When I say people approach us, it's not just meetings, it's training events as well. So um to make training events more engaging and more productive, we've been asked to prepare and sometimes that's you know content that's maybe not our forty you know but that that's part of the part of the point is that you know we bring our 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 expertise if you like to the the table which is the how are you going to present this in a particularly engaging way and um that that could be like a full day a, a planning of a full day and it, it really does build up over a full day for example because uh, we only had twenty minutes there so that obviously is a, is a bit different and quite challenging but we we say it all the time in terms of practice what you preach. We wouldn't we wouldn't expect at nine o'clock in the morning to say, Ross, you know, tell me this deep and meaningful response to this question. It would be a very much a build up into making that happen more naturally and more productively. So again, it, it, like you're saying, it's abs you're absolutely right. It's it's a quite a quite a natural progression in terms of being able to feel confident and being able to speak at first and then feel more confident to continue speaking later on or want to contribute later on. Nice one. Anybody got any questions for our speakers? It's not a question, but I thank you very much. Yeah, I took away some learnings from both of those. Um, I think it's the same when you're looking at slide decks, it's, you know, death by PowerPoint. So yeah, picking up a couple of skills there just to um, streamline them and, and not bore people. So it's one thing saying it and then putting it on a screen and, and trying to demonstrate just what you would do in the office. So thank you very much. Pamela, another quick question for you. Um, you, I think you might have mentioned breakout rooms on Teams. Is that possible? Yes. So yeah. there's a new feature that Teams have um I've launched they're obviously aware that a lot of people are doing events on zoom yeah so and um, they've developed their live events so you can do your breakout rooms and um, you can access it from the calendar and you can create links so you can send it out via your email and um, if you have meal shots available so um yes yeah, so you can set it up and set your breakout rooms like this brilliant yeah we'll definitely be sure to test that out Any, anything that we've done this last year that involves breakout rooms, we've always done it on Zoom for that that reason. So it's good to see that they've introduced that. So we'll definitely have a look at that. That's yeah, possible. Zoom were Zoom were the first, but Microsoft have got a lot of developers, so they're usually hot on the heels if there's something good. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Nice one. Okay. Look. Do we have any any other questions? Final call for questions. Going to say is everybody back? Yeah, yeah. Um, just a, a massive thank you um, from me and everybody at the chamber team for our four speakers. It's been there's been bits of every single presentation, as there always is, that I'm going to take away. Um, I'm not entirely sure, Kim, that I'm taking away the five a.m. club. Maybe <laughs> you do. You're old. <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> I'm I'm the opposite. I mean, those of you that know me know there's nothing about me that's a morning person at all. I'm terrible. Um, I'd still be going at kind of one o'clock in the morning. But uh, yeah, I mean, just lots of things from the the tips about all these meetings and um, the way that we kind of interact with people to um, automating and, and thinking about all the systems that we're using. I mean, I think actually as a, a, an organisation, we're pretty good at using Teams, but there's still so much that we can learn and, and improve and, um, and just make, you know, make things easier for the people that work with us. I think that's, that's always useful. Um, and then a, a really interesting session and a discussion at the end there with Kirsty and Kim that that made us think about you know what does the the it's not if we're going to call it the new normal whatever um comes next um I think we're we're all pretty much agreed that we're not going back to to where we were it used to say February 2000 and uh, 2020 as if it was you know um just yesterday and now we're nearly a year on from it it's ridiculous um but 
you know, I think there's been a lot of changes this year, some forced, some not forced. Um, and I, I wouldn't necessarily say that January has been the most productive of months for us all because lockdown in the dark is just not bloody fun, is it? Um, oh. Kirsty's got the most gorgeous dog that drags her out of the house to get her steps going, but um, <laughs> I can't say the same for me. So that's why I've signed up to a challenge to get me out of the house in February. But um, yeah, just I guess, you know, it's always good to get four different views of, of a different subject and it's been a really good one today. So um, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. You can have two minutes back of your two hours. <laughs> uh, time for another uh, cuppa and a bit of a break. So thank you very much. Um, well done to Sarah and to Donna and to Ross for all their organising and hosting and the recording will be on YouTube in due course. So thanks again folks and I'll see you um, hopefully at another session soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.